How's everyone doing today? Good? Yeah? Has B-Sides been, uh, been fun for everyone so far? Yeah? yeah. It's been, I've been having a good time. It's been enjoyable. Everybody here is awesome. You guys are, everyone's so nice. It's crazy. Yeah, so thank you all for allowing me to speak in front of you and everything. So should be good. Give it, give it like one more minute. Get started. All right. Okay. Are we good? Yep. Good. All right. Uh, so my name's Troy. Um, I'm going to be talking about threat modeling at scale. And uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So a uh, little bit about myself. Uh, I love dogs, beer, science, not necessarily in that order. Um, started my IT journey in the Navy. Uh, I was in the Navy for about six years. I was a fire controlman, uh, Tomahawk Tech. Uh, from there, I got out and I went to work for Costco. Uh, I've been on the threat analysis team now for going on five years, so it's been it's been a lot of fun. Uh, my super supportive team is here as well, so <laughs> thank you guys. Um, but yeah, and then uh, from there, it's just been it's been a journey. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, real quick question for everybody: hey, Who here threat models has threat modeled? Does it on a regular basis? Oh wow, awesome! So. Please feel free to ask questions. If we have time at the end, I've, it's been going right about the 25 minute mark. If we can't get questions in, feel free to find me afterwards and we can chat. Totally, totally fine with that. So just let me know. All right. So uh, real quick, what is threat modeling? I'm not going into how to threat model or, or anything like that, but I'll give a quick, quick overview. Um, generally, you want to answer four questions, right? What is being worked on? So define your scope of the, of the engagement of the threat model. Uh, gather information, so this could be documents, diagrams, whatever. Uh, and then usually you're gonna build some kind of visual model of the application or system or whatever it is you're threat modeling. Uh, you also want to answer the question of what could go wrong. Uh, so identify threats, vulnerabilities. Um, sometimes you'll pair these things for risk within the threat model, sometimes you don't. Uh, it kind of depends on how you do it at your organization. Um, and then uh, what should we do about it? So these are mitigating controls, your recommendations, uh, things of that nature. And then uh, for uh, remediations, you definitely want to think about, you know, what's gonna work best for the business and things of that nature. And then uh, did we do a good job? So uh, validation of, of the threat models through reviews with the project teams or, you know, retrospectives or what have you. All right, so uh, challenges of threat modeling uh, really comes down to a, a, a few things here. So uh, lack of expertise. So uh, a lot of times devs are focused on, you know, pr providing a solution that's gonna work best for their customers and provide the most value, right? And that's what they're supposed to be focused on. That's, that's why they're there. And uh, so a lot of times security kind of gets put in the back burner or, or it's, you know, not at the forefront of their, of their building and stuff like that. So. Um, definitely you, you tend to see a lack of expertise with the, uh, the developers that you're working with. Uh, another is a lack of time. Uh, a lot of times there's, um, tight deadlines, you know, uh, you got to get things to market and that can, that time crunch can make it so that security becomes more difficult to implement. Uh, and a lot of times everything else will get prioritized over, over the threat modeling process, get prioritized over security in general. Uh, but yeah. Uh, and then lastly, lack of resources. Uh, a lot of times the uh, tools that you'll be using are much more focused on making the build process easier, helping the developers find, you know, maybe certain kinds of bugs that may not be security vulnerabilities. Um, the tools sometimes don't support the active threat modeling. Uh, and so having the right resources as well can be kind of challenging. Uh, and then what does, what does all this mean? It means a lack of uh, value when you're doing your threat modeling, when you're going through your threat modeling process. Uh, when that happens, a lot of times resentment can build between your project teams and the security teams. And it just makes the whole process a lot more difficult. All right, so, and then the big question that we're gonna answer today, how can you threat model and do it at scale? Right? How can you perform threat modeling at scale? So let's jump into it. 
So firstly is uh, collaboration, right? Um, it's a very collaborative effort between your security professionals and your project teams. So what I like to say is as a security professional, you wanna make sure that you're able to train, assist and empower your project teams to make the best decisions and build the best products that are the most secure, right? And as a security professional, you can bring that knowledge to the table and collaborate with them throughout the, the design process or, the, or even the early building processes, right? Uh, the, and while you're collaborating, while you get this collaboration between the project teams and the, and the security teams, you're inherently going to have the project teams learning about security. So as the project teams learn about security, they're gonna start inadvertently or purposefully implementing those security those security controls that you've been talking to them about over and over, we hope, and start integrating those into these solutions that they're building. And vice versa, the security teams are gonna start to learn what can hinder the business the most, right? So maybe there's certain mitigations that they learn, you know, makes the product work in a way that's counterintuitive, right? And maybe there's a different mitigation that they can use instead. Uh, and then as they work with those business teams in the future, they can put, push those rather than trying to push something that's gonna cause issues. And then uh, overall with that, efficiency is gonna improve as you become more collaborative. Uh, another, so tools, um, like I mentioned before, tools, uh, a lot of times uh, it's, it's hard to find some that are specific for threat modeling. They are out there. Uh, there's paid, there's uh, paid versions, there's free versions. But uh, one of the most important uh, aspects when it comes to the tools that you're going to choose to use in your threat modeling process at an organization is going to be asymmetric collaboration. Uh, and what I mean by that is the tools need to allow you to perform duties or work or whatever it is that you're doing outside of set time windows with the project teams or vice versa for the project teams to do things outside of a meeting with you and then allow you to go in and see what it is that was done, what changes have been made, what progress has been made, things like that. So that asymmetric collaboration in the tools is extremely important. Uh, so you also have to take into account tools for uh, diagrams, right? Um, with threat modeling, you're making visual representations of your, of your solutions and being able to accurately depict those uh, is extremely important because a picture is worth a thousand words and it's a lot easier to understand what's going on in a solution when you're able to visualize it. Also, uh, supporting the collaboration, right, that I just talked about, you gotta have tools that can support that. So meetings, recordings, um, for reference later, uh, whether those meetings are in person or virtual or hybrid, um, just being able to support support collaboration. Uh, another is building reports. Uh, so having a tool that is capable of producing reports that are tailored for the audience that you're giving that report to. So it could be a report that's more tailored for compliance. It could be a report that's more tailored for maybe high level executives. Um, or maybe it's a more detailed report that's going to the project team and maybe other security teams that are gonna be uh, helping in the process of remediation and things of that nature. Uh, and then validation tools. So with validation tools, um, you can use you know code scanning, vuln scans, you can do pen tests. And the idea there is that once those things are done, you can look at the findings from those and see if they differ from the threats and vulnerabilities that you sought when you were doing your threat modeling process, right? And if there's vast differences, then you know that maybe there's things you guys are missing or not touching on in, in, while you're doing the threat models. So it's, it's a very retrospective kind of tool for validation, but definitely extremely helpful. All right. Uh, so procedures and practices. So with this one, there are two main questions that you have to answer when you're building up a threat modeling process at an organization. That being security team, what should the security teams bring to the table is the first one. Uh, expertise, so their knowledge of security, right? Uh, they need to be able to give guidance. So 
knowing what is secure is one thing, but being able to guide the project teams to what the best option is that works for both the security and the business to you know, keep moving forward, that's where that guidance becomes extremely valuable. Uh, and then templates as well. At the end of the day, the threat model is a product of the security teams, right? Uh, you want to own the template, you want to own the document, and you want to make sure that you're able to uh, keep account of what is delivered to the project team and how it's delivered and how it looks. What should the project teams bring to the table? That's the second question. Time, for one. Um, threat modeling can be a very time time consuming process. It's not always, but it can be. And the project teams and the security teams need to be prepared for that, right? When you get into a meeting and you start walking through the solution, there could be a lot of different connections, different processes or functions of certain applications that you have to talk through. And finding those, those threats and vulnerabilities that could be posed on that solution takes time. And so patience is, is definitely a virtue when it comes to threat modeling. Uh, a RACI is also extremely important, uh, knowing who's responsible, accountable, uh, consulted and informed. And this is from the project team, right? So that when the security team has an issue, they know who they can quickly go to uh, to get it resolved and keep the flow of information open so that there's transparency. Uh, and then lastly, documentation and diagrams. So to speed up that lengthy process that I talked about, front loading can be extremely helpful there. So if you're able to get in-depth documentation and diagrams from your project team, you can front load a lot of the work so that when you get into these meetings that require a lot of time, you've already done the heavy lifting. And then at that point, it becomes a conversation. All right. So I say, I say here, define everything, right? And the reason I do this is because the more speed bumps that you can remove in your process of doing the threat models, the better. The, the idea here is, is that you want to streamline it as much as possible, right? Because when you're doing it in a large organization um, at scale, it becomes time consuming, it becomes difficult. And so either you hire more people or you make the process more efficient. So what I mean by this is, do you do the threat model? Make sure you have it defined as to what justifies a threat model, what doesn't. Uh, your intake method, when and how are people coming to your team to request a threat model to be done? Uh, checkpoints, how often are you meeting with the project team? When are you meeting with the project team? What triggers it, right? Uh, and then what is considered an escalation? So if there's a big disagreement between the security professional and the business on something, right? How do you, how do you resolve that? Quick, uh, being able to identify and have that defined, how escalations happen can resolve those quickly. Extremely important. Uh, and then delivery and post-delivery. So when you're, you've finished, you need to know who to deliver it to. And this is where those different versions of the document can come, become very helpful because you can deliver the high level overview to executives. You can deliver the super technical one to the uh, project team and the other security teams, right? Uh, and then post delivery. So you've identified threats, you've identified vulnerabilities and you know what you need to do to mitigate those things. You're not, as the person doing the threat model and oftentimes in large organizations, you're probably not gonna be the one that is in charge of following those to remediation. And so understanding how to hand that off to the next team that is gonna track those and make sure that they come to fruition is extremely important to document and define in a process, as a process so that the remediations don't get just found and then it's just white noise from there. You, you want them to get fixed, that's the whole purpose of this. And you want it to be fixed before it goes to production. Uh, and then what to do when the design changes, right? This is a huge, this can become a huge speed bump, a huge blocker is you'll be halfway done with your threat model and all of a sudden they're like, you know that one feature that we spent a week on? Yeah, we don't want that anymore or we're changing it to this other thing. So knowing what to do in that moment is extremely important and it requires a lot of communication. Um, versioning of your documents is extremely important as well so that you can maybe go back to a different version that works better to then work back up from there to try and save you time. Um, but at the end of the day, remember that threat modeling is a collaborative process. And so information that is being shared to you by the project teams is gonna have fallacies, it's gonna have omissions, it's gonna have um, fabrications. We're all human, we make mistakes, right? 
but identifying those things as fast as possible will help you to get past those so that you can finish your threat model and have it be accurate. And not to mention when there is stuff like that, you start to notice it really fast. Like as you're threat modeling, things just will start to not line up. It, it just won't make sense and you'll, you'll do it on your own kind of, you'll, you'll see that something's missing. So, all right. Continuous improvement, right? So as you're building up this threat modeling process, you wanna try to continuously improve it. So what is being done right? Uh, reward that, right? So if the project team or the security team is doing things right, make sure you keep doing those, identify them and, and point it out, right? And then what could be done better? So maybe there's areas where there could be minor improvements made. Uh, identifying those and taking action to streamline the process and make it better is important. And then where are the repeating pain points? So these are things where maybe you're running into blockers during the process at the same point every time, right? Maybe there's something in the intake method that could resolve that. Or maybe you're finding the same vulnerability and it's going unfixed over and over again, right? It's, it's identifying those and getting it done as fast as possible. Uh, and then retrospectives, right? This is where a lot of that work will happen is in your retrospectives, getting the security team together, talking through these things and finding solutions that'll streamline the process. All right, benefits of threat modeling. So one, one of many is saving time and money. It is much cheaper to make a fix to a bug or, or some vulnerability before it goes to production. Uh, and it's, it's a lot quicker too. So using threat modeling to identify these things early will save you time, will save you money. It's, it's extremely helpful. Uh, and then cooperation and understanding. So when you have the security teams and the business teams coming together and solving problems together, they're gonna be more inclined to work with each other and be more open and forthcoming with information and then you're gonna see improvements in security when that happens, right? Because the business isn't gonna be scared that they're gonna get you know, told no or, become, or get blocked on something. They're gonna be more inclined to come to you as for advice or just, hey, how do I do this better? Uh, and then as, as the threat modeling process becomes more prevalent in your organization, older solutions will start to fall off or if they have major architectural changes, they get reviewed through the threat modeling process and everything starts to become, I don't wanna say more secure, but you'll have, you'll have more confidence in your solutions that you're deploying, that they are secure, that they have less threats, less vulnerabilities. Uh, it'll also give you a much better kind of picture of your organization's security posture. And then uh, I have up here improved pen tests. And what, what, it, what I mean by that is when you, when you have the threat models and, you, and you've identified these vulnerabilities, you've identified these, these potential threats, you're able to then feed that to the team that's gonna be performing the threat, the, I'm sorry, the pen testing. What you're doing there is you are focusing their, their efforts, right? So pen tests are expensive. <laughs> I think we all know that. They're, they're an extremely expensive endeavor. And so if you can focus the pen test on things that may be an issue, instead of this broad, just test everything mindset, you can probably drive costs down and the quality of your pen test will probably go up. You wanna be careful not to get too specific because then they might miss things that they should have caught. So it's a, definitely a fine line you'd walk, but it, it can help in the long run. All right, so I have some, uh, some AI memes up here. Um, what is the future of, of threat modeling? Well. Yes, I think AI will have a play in it. I don't think they're coming for your job though. <laughs> um, what's probably gonna happen is AI is gonna be used to augment teams that are doing this threat modeling, right? They're gonna be, the AI is gonna be able to see things that the human, the human process can't see. Different, maybe there's threats in one solution that ties into another, that ties into another, and that threat can manifests itself in an application that's maybe, you know, too, too down the chain or whatever. It's, it's definitely going to improve the overall quality of the threat analysis, 
but it's going to be there primarily, like I said, to augment the teams and give them a better understanding of what's going on and just make their job quicker and more efficient. I hope you like the, uh, the memes too. They made me laugh. Uh, and then this here, this is a quote. I'll, I'll let you, I'm not going to read it, but you guys can read it. Um, I love this quote. It keeps me going, keeps, uh, keeps me motivated and everything. So I thought I'd put it up here, but I just want to say thank you everybody for having me and, and thank you to my wife and kids for being at home. My wife's holding the fort down right now. So, so I could be here. So that's awesome. And thank you to my team for coming and supporting me. So thank you all. I think, I th do we have, I think we have a few minutes if anybody has questions. So how are you getting buy-in from your developers, um, product managers, like squad leads, like team leads? I'm assuming you have to engineer it at this point. And it's, um, it's tough to work with our developers where, you know, we're constantly pushing out features, but for me, you know, if they don't have the resources, and, and yeah. they can never tackle these are not vulnerabilities, Yes. Yes. So it's we what we shoot for is in the design process when there's a somewhat solidified design. That's when we like to get involved. Without a solidified design, you kind of spin your wheels a little and you'll do a lot of work that may be for nothing because the design will change. So you want it to be close to to being done, um, but not into the build phase yet. When you've got developers that are pushing back that he that heavily though, it's it's gonna take a lot of, of effort on everybody's part. You're gonna have to build out the process and show that it can be streamlined. And then you're gonna have to get executive leadership to step in and be like, this has to happen. It's, it's it, yes, but you need to be able to show that, hey, we have a process in place that will make this quick. Like it's not gonna, we're not, we're not gonna take up more time than we need what you can front load us with a lot of stuff that'll help and, you know, help you know, shorten it down. Yep. Yeah. We, we, we like to use the term funnel rather than blocker or gate. And the idea behind that is when the, they're building something, they're eventually gonna funnel down to a point that has to be, they have to go through it, right? And one of those points is the threat model process. They can't, they can't, <laughs> they can't move forward until that's done. And there's a lot of, and rather than making it like a, a, a a checkpoint in some arbitrary list. What has happened is a lot of other teams won't give them what they need to, until they see a threat model from my team. And so they'll, they'll be like, okay, we'll just go past you, that's fine. And then you get to the next team that maybe is setting up the network, right? They're like, oh, well, we need to see the threat model. And then they're like, oh, well, maybe I should have listened and they'll go back, so, yep, go ahead. Can you speak a little bit more about uh, asymmetric collaboration? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, the like I've said, like I said a uh, hundred times, is and I, I, I'm going to keep saying it is it's really, 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 really hard to get a bunch of architects, engineers, devs into a room with you at the same time. Like, it's it's impossible. And then you, if you try to take into account like integrations of other tools that are being built, other applications, and now you've got architects from another team and that team and maybe another team and getting them all into a room, it's not gonna happen. And so if you have these tools that allow for asymmetric collaboration, that allow an architect to go into a document, make some adjustments, leave notes, and then move on with their day, maybe they had five minutes, and then you, see, you get maybe a notification, hey, somebody made an edit. And then you go in and you see the edits, you see the notes, and then you can add additional questions to it, you can make adjustments to it. And this goes for everything from reports to the diagrams to question docs, you name it. Yeah. Do you have like uh, one way of doing threat modeling or do you have like a Yes. So we, it's becoming very cumbersome. Um, and we are, in the, uh, even, even now, we are still trying to refine our process as best we can. And so 
we have what's called a consultation summary. And the consultation summary is designed to answer those one-off questions. Like, let's say they're like, oh, we just want to integrate with that API. I'm not going to threat model a single connection to the API, right? Like, that's, that's a lot of effort for one simple function. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll shrink that down into a much smaller deliverable that just answers the question with basic security observations, security concerns, security requirements based on industry standards, things of that nature. But yes, that, that's a good question. Yeah. What happened? They they will be kept from going to production, so they can move forward with testing. They can move forward with QAT, whatever it is, right? But going to production, if they there has to be a very strong reason that they would go to production without having a threat model done. So your PA said. What's yeah? What's crazy is I don't think I don't think threat model the threat model is even on the release. Michaela, keep me honest here. I don't even think it is. Like I said, I think other teams that are on the release to be able to for it to go live won't do their part until they see our threat model. And so, yeah. <clears throat> can it can do we allow an app to go to production without a threat model? Yeah. So. Yeah, it's it it's definitely a very interesting dynamic, and I'm not saying it's the best, but it's been working for us so far. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, you're good. Yeah, yeah, it's it's they're roughly defined right now, um, but they're in the process of being much much harder. Much hard, much harder stops. Like you, you cannot proceed without having it. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So how we define it is: Are you seeing major architectural changes when you have those releases? Right? Are you introducing some new function that is gonna create, you know, all these new connections and open up all these different avenues of of attack vectors and all that? If you're not, like, let's say your your release is just adding a data point to a connection that already exists, you probably don't need to threat model just that. That's that's probably quite a bit. But if you are noticing that when you proceed, it's gonna create a lot of new connections. Maybe you're adding a bunch of APIs that are all hitting these different points and calling all these databases. That's when absolutely you would wanna proceed with a threat model. So it's, it's, it's really, it's kind of using your best judgment. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I would say that if you can wait until a lot of it is done, and in place and then maybe do a backfill on it. Because if you try to do it every single one and then like piece them together, that would, it, that'd be very cumbersome and it, you would start getting some resentment between the project teams and the security teams. Yeah. All right, that is all the time we have. <laughs> Feel free to find me afterwards. I'd, I'd answer any questions you guys have. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.